<laughs> oh my god. Okay, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Yours are bigger than mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Couldn't even do a push up, not one. And I dropped sequentially 14 minutes off of each marathon, and I go my for Boston. I didn't know what I was in for. Bad run, but I showed up for myself. Like, I love running with my mothers in marathons. I'm just a run coach. Hi, Ali. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. I know you had me on your podcast and now I'm having, I'm going to have you on my channel. And uh, this has been a little bit in the making because you're super, super, super busy. So thank you for, you know, setting up 30 minutes to chat to my subscribers on my channel. My so I know that you're very um, accomplished. You, there's a lot of people out there who know you, but just for the odd person out there who doesn't know who Ali is, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Ali Felsenthal. I am a run coach with my own run coaching uh, business worldwide that has now moved completely to an online uh, business model. However, I am still you know, taking clients and seeing them for their strength and conditioning sessions in person um, where people are comfortable enough doing that. Uh, I definitely would say the realm of runners that I work with are runners that are stressed out in corporate, needing uh, a work-life balance, they're running for a PR or just to, you know, better their lives through health and fitness. And that's really what my coaching philosophy stands for. I love to help inspire other people to get running for their health and to just, you know, challenge, I guess, any battles that are in their way in their heads because running is truly a lifestyle. It translates to everything at least for me, everything that I do. Like if I have a bad run, I don't do well in work that day. And I'm just, I'm just different. But it's important being a coach, being able to adjust your mindset and be like, okay, bad run, but I showed up for myself. And I'm very, very big on the small wins. I think I've said that to you as well. Yeah. One of the things that really I find fascinating about you is how you're not your typical coach that just focuses on, okay, I'm just giving you the plan. This is a plan. You follow it. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer. You really focus on the athlete as a whole, you know, like this holistic thing to you. You motivate them. You talk to them about their lives. I mean, obviously you're not a psychologist, but um, you really want to understand what they're going through so that you can help them become the athlete they want to be. And I think there's, um, you have testimonials on Instagram from athletes that you're currently coaching and that you have coached in the past. Um, and when I watch them, that gives me the chills because they all vouch for you so much. And guys, just so you know, I did a class with Ali and I almost, I almost passed out. You came in from a run. Oh my gosh. Of course you were going to be tired. Oh my God. But he was like... You're so amazing. Like, thank you. I would like to know how. I know you've been an athlete for a long time, but how did you start running? That's a really good question. Um, I guess it goes back to my swimming days, which is this is hilarious. I hated running. Like, I oh. didn't <laughs> running for dry land. Like, when we had dry land days, I would complain like about the running. And then I didn't swim in college and I kind of took up running as a very recreational sport. Uh, my mom was a runner. So I just began running with her. And I remember her like asking me to run five miles and I would look at her like, me? <laughs> I can't run five miles. And I literally just started. I put one foot in front of the other. I actually remember that day when I actually finished three miles and I was like, yeah, I finished three miles. And like, it just kept, it just kept growing. And then, you know, lo and behold, I jumped into my first marathon. Like, right. like So when did you decide to become a coach? When I ran my first marathon, I knew I always wanted to help other people because my swim coach inspired me just from a coaching aspect. Like I was like, wow, this person changed my life. Like I'm going to 
I'm going to have this forever, you know, regardless swimmer or not swimmer now. Like it was just very inspiring to me, but I, I didn't think I had it in me because it's a lot to put yourself out there as a coach. It's, it takes a personality. And when I ran that first marathon, it wasn't so much as like me as a runner. I was like, wow, I did this. I just felt for all of these people that train so hard or maybe don't, that have so much potential to be able to finish these races with a little help, not getting injured like the right way, but like just the energy and just seeing all that, I wanted to help people do that. They were maybe on the sidelines. I just like, it fills my heart. It fills my heart. That's why I ran the New York City Marathon alongside Pear, the 52-year-old last year who broke his PR by five minutes. So we got a 3.55. Yeah. Oh my God. You have to pace me one of these days because that's my kata for Boston. <laughs> so. Yeah, I would love to. I love, <laughs> I'm serious. I love pacing. I just don't like being a pacer. But like, I love running with my runners in marathons. That's wow. awesome. That's awesome. So do you have any, like, I know that you're very into fitness as well. Obviously, you're putting a lot of content out there on Instagram, on your own website, um, with workouts for, not only for runners, for people in general who want to become fitter. Um, how did you incorporate that aspect into your run coaching business? So this is for probably most people that don't know me, and I'm working on an ebook on this right now. But it's called Cross Training to My PR. Uh, basically, I got injured four years ago now, and I had a serious quad strain and piriformis syndrome, which is like a paramuscle in your butt, both on my right leg. Um, I was stubborn. <laughs> I was overtraining. I was not eating correctly. I was not recovering, and I was just diving into the fitness industry. Uh, I ignored it. And then, yeah, lo and behold, the MRI, you know, spoke for itself. So as a result and a silver lining of that, I was so frustrated. Susie, I like, you, you know, like I couldn't go running. I had the number one thing I loved taking from me. And I was like, I would have days where I would just be like depressed. And so I got really into the TRX. And TRX. Do you have it right <laughs> there? <laughs> yeah. I, um, hit circuit training, but I wasn't good at hit. I like couldn't do it because I was a runner. I was like, what is this? I couldn't even do a push up, Not one. Pr I promise you. Um, and then I just remember one of my coworkers one day said, give me 50 punches. And I was like, what? I can't do that. And like, I just was like punching boxing. That's how I got into boxing and more aerobic cross training activities that are lower impact on your legs. Um, but you know, they're still high intensity and just circuit training and my body completely changed when I did that, but I wasn't running. I couldn't. So that's okay. how I've gotten into all these fitness classes. And when I got better, when I got into the coaching, I tied that part into my coaching practice, making cross training a day in a training regimen of the week to, you know, substitute for a run so that you're not killing your joints in your legs. Right. Let's say that one of my subscribers is interested in you coaching them. How do you know that you're the right fit for them or that they're the right fit for you? Because every coach is different. Every athlete is a little bit different. I could not agree more, uh, especially because I'm a hands-on coach. I have a consultation call with every single runner that I onboard, just like kind of get to know them, see if we vibe, like see if there's chemistry right. there. You know, and if, if there's not, it's not like a, a no-go, but I'll give it, like, you know, let's see how a week goes. And if it's just like, just not there, it's probably best for both parties to not engage in any sort of relationship just because it's, it's not even about me. It's about the runner too. I want them to have the best experience, but I, I really locked out with my people. I just, I'm so grateful. That I have the runners that I get to coach. I really, I look forward to it every day. So I know that you um, qualify for Boston. You strike me as a very stubborn person. I know you are. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting better, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not about quality at all, especially when you're an athlete, you know, and, and if you have um, any kind of aspirations, if you're competitive, it's good to be stubborn and to persevere. Um, so... How did you decide, okay, I'm going to qualify for Boston? 
was that always something you wanted to do or did, did it just happen? It just happened. Honestly, oh, wow. it's the true story. I ran three marathons in a row. Okay. I trained for this, the two after the first one, kind of. Okay. And I dropped sequentially 14 minutes off of each marathon and I qualified for Boston just because. Right. And like, meanwhile, I'm like 20, whatever, 27 years old. There's 30 year olds. I'm 30 now that were like, don't you have stuff better to do than like, be here? like, you know, because it's like, why would you run a marathon when you're in your twenties? And I'm like, yeah, okay. I don't know anyone here. Um, people were praying. It was serious. And I didn't know what I was in for. I was like, okay, yeah, this is serious. No. Yeah. So it was just kind of, it happened. All right. So what is, is the marathon your favorite distance? <sighs> yes, because the, um, just the way you feel when you cross that finish line and just the energy. I, I personally love the half for racing, but it's not the same energy and it's not right. the same people. Like I love seeing runners along the way. Like I remember in San Diego, there was a girl, she was so much faster than me. I could not keep up with her, but I was trying. And she saw that I was trying. She's like, stay with me. And I was like, I can't, I can't, I, can't. I don't include that word anymore, but I, you know, I pushed myself and then I let her go, but like for a solid seven miles, this girl, you know, like just meeting those kinds of people on, on a marathon route. It's crazy. It's amazing. It's super inspiring. It's, right. Wow. I, that has happened to me as well, running. I remember once I had these two girls, they were friends, they were chatting with each other. So they were keeping a conversational pace. To me, that was very hard, but it was right behind them. Um, and at one point, one of them looks back and she's like, do you want to pass us? <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll pass you. <laughs> I was trying, you know, like it was kind of windy. So I was just using them to block them. <laughs> I hear ya. I hear ya. <laughs> it was too funny. But then I actually ended up finishing before them, which I didn't think. They kept me going for a while. I love it. So in terms of plans for the future, I know that you right now have these very, I saw, um, I think it was on Instagram yesterday that you have updates to your website and you have classes and a subscription service that people can sign up for. So what are your plans moving forward? That seems to me like it's just such an amazing adventure, new adventure for you. Yeah. You know, I have my website uh, right now. I have a subscription basis. Uh, if you haven't, signed up, the 50 slots are not taken. It's 10.99 a month for 30 plus workouts. So as I keep adding to my workout library, those first 50 people just keep getting access to all of those workouts. It's like, I wish I was one of those people. It's a really good deal. I'm not, I'm just saying that, like, you know, cause I have all this content. Um, in terms of where I first see myself going, I want to, you know, broaden my reach, um, for my virtual run coaching business. So not necessarily working one-on-one, -on -one with people, um, but I could, you know, provide a consultation call and provide the tools and guidance to create some sort of cycling plan and, you know, if all goes well, figure out the steps from there, but definitely like grow my presence worldwide, get into more brand partnerships. So like to Fossey, like the sunglasses, for example, um, get, you know, um, paid collaborations uh, and also my podcast, get my podcast episodes sponsored as well. And just get into like a little more freelance writing. Um, yeah. Because that's your, your background, right? I, and you're like a business major yeah. from college? Yeah. Right, right, right. That's so awesome. So where can people find you? I'll put all the links, but what, where's um, the best way to reach out to you? I think Instagram is my main thing, but YouTube, Facebook, uh, runwithally.org, uh, Instagram, runwithally podcast run with ali live you know. <laughs> i'll put all the links below if you put run with ali in google you will find me right right that's awesome and now i'm gonna let you go because i know that you have um again a super super packed schedule you're in between classes right now and guys <laughs> please go to her website and um the first 50 people get a subscription for her classes and then you get grandfathered in right? That's how it works. Exactly. Like, yeah. Cool. And she just opened it up yesterday. So the 50 spots, there's a couple available. 
So yep. go there, guys. I can vouch for that because um, <laughs> I have trained with her. <laughs> She's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ali. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody. Have a good evening. You Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.